guys and welcome back. On this week's show, part two of our bread box build. Well, there's no need for a lengthy explanation. If you saw last week's show, you know what's happening. So let's head over to the bench and get started right in on it with the making of the template for the second pass of that tambour track. Well, one of the nice things about uh, my beam compass, the commercially available one, is the off-center point here. Um, so in order to make the second template, all I had to do was uh, adjust this point, just rotate it to the left or to the right until it became the size that I wanted. You can adjust it, you know, just a little over 1 16th each way. It makes fine tuning much easier than with a shop made one. So we don't need a video on how to make this template. I already showed you last week, but <clears throat> I'm going to make the template for the second pass. And as I said last week, if you guys have a 9 16th uh, router bit, then there's no need to make the second template. And that quick test pass on our original test piece uh, shows that we indeed have a 9 16 um, route here. So that's perfect. So our template is right on the money. Um, well, let's move on to uh, working on our side panels. Well, the first thing that we're going to do with our side pieces is we're going to line up our routing template here um, for the profile of the side and we're just going to mark it out. It, we're not going to cut anything just yet but we are going to mark it out just to give us some lines of reference as to where we want to place our other templates. So once we get both of those pieces marked out then we're going to line up our templates to route the tambour track. Well, in order to have some layout lines that we can place our uh, templates onto our side panels, we need to mark a center line for um, our routing templates. And I know it seems a little finicky, but we want to come in from the edge um, to, to a distance of 6 and 27 30 seconds. Now, you know, you can adjust it as you wish. Maybe you don't want to be as precise as that. But 6 and 27 30 seconds, and then we're going to take a square and mark across that for our center line. Well, that measurement that I just gave you of uh, 6 and 27 30 seconds that is measured from the front edge of your um, bread box now we're going to uh, adhere these routing templates to do the track with some double-sided tape now one thing you want to keep in mind here is that in order for this to get some good adhesion, you're going to want to clamp them together as well. That'll really make them stick. Sometimes just pressing them down on their own isn't enough and it likes to let go. Also, when lining up these routing templates, make sure you mark what is the inside of your board so that, so that you know uh, and can be sure that you're not going to get two pieces that are reversed. You've come this far you don't want to be messing it up. As well, when lining up these templates, remember how we moved this center line one inch up? Well, that one inch up is actually the alignment mark. Um, you don't want to route it below that. So align your template one inch uh, below the edge, just like that. And what that'll also do is it'll give you this edge right here so that when you're routing this 
recess or the groove for the tambour, it'll give you a starting edge to, to get your collar right there so you're not kind of fumbling around, gouging out the bottom. You'll already be in line to go with your, um, with your route. Another thing you want to do here when routing on this template is route counterclockwise and uh, that will help with the um, rotation of the bit in order to help you hold that collar up against the side of your template. So I'm going to throw a clamp on this to get that extra adhesion that I want. I'm going to clamp it down to the bench and I'm going to route that uh, first pass of my tambour track. Well, that was our outer diameter and now um, I have the inner diameter template in place and same process I'm just going to line it up and route the inner diameter of the tambour track. Now with that track completely routed, uh, we're just going to check on the dimension of it and we are at 9 16 just like our test piece. So everything's good there. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it or not, but this track will be routed at a quarter inch deep. Now I do see a potential problem here and that's that I've routed and I see a biscuit in the routing. No big deal to see the biscuit but I'm afraid that it might be cut into this area right here. And if that's the case, I may have to change the design of mine so that this biscuit doesn't show in this front edge. So I'm gonna check that and uh, make the adjustments if I have to. Other than that, um, I'm gonna route the other inside panel or the other side panel now, making sure that you actually are routing on the inside so that you have two inside faces to work with. And just so you know, in checking, uh, I can see here that this is definitely going to show uh, if I cut this the way that it is. Uh, I'm a little disappointed about that in that uh, I mentioned to you guys that that is one thing to be careful of, but apparently uh, I screwed it up. So that's, I, I'm not going to let it blow the project. I'm just going to move this radius out, whatever I need to clear that biscuit. It looks like it may only be about a quarter of an inch and then everything will be good after that. It also means I'm going to have to make a new routing template for the profile of these side pieces. Once again, no big deal. Um, we can overcome that little issue. So, sorry about that. What are you going to do? Hey, I'm human too. So, moving right along. It's not going to wreck our project. Um, going to route that other panel. So, in order to uh, fix my mess up, all I've done is cut another piece of MDF for the routing template. I've traced my original pattern here, and then I've moved it over one half of an inch and then I've retraced the profile and then used some French curves to get a smooth transition between the two. Now I'll cut this out, sand it as I did the original and in the whole grand scheme of the project nobody other than the guys watching this video are gonna know that Kenny messed up.
Done deal, boys. Problem solving in the making. The next thing we want to do with our side panels is route a half inch dado here. Um, it'll be vertical, three eighths of an inch back from this front corner here. Um, so what I've done is I've set up a tool guide and uh, I'm just going to route this groove. If you're going to do this method and you're setting up a tool guide, just remember guys that you have to calculate in the distance of your uh, base plate of your router to get to where your bit is. Don't just line it up in any old way and go for it. But we want to route it from this top edge right down and stop it inside of our 916 tambour track. We don't want to go beyond that. And there it is. Um, and that will accept a board, a half inch wide or thick board, right across the front face of our, um, of our bread box. Kind of finishes off that top edge. So I'm going to do the other one. And uh, I didn't give you any measurements of where to place this here, guys, other than the three eighths of an inch back from this front edge of your um, bread box because I don't know what kind of router you have. I don't know your base plate. I don't know if you'll be using an edge guide or just a straight piece of wood, maybe a straight edge clamp down. You can use whatever you like, but I don't know what system you would be using, so I can't really give you those measurements. Um, it is, however, a quarter inch deep, the same as our tambour groove. So there you go. Let's do the other side. Well, now it's time to cut the side profile of our side panels. So we're going to head to the scroll saw. I'm going to throw in a number seven reverse tooth blade and cut just outside the line because don't forget, we're going to be using a routing template to clean it up at the end. Um, if you guys don't have a scroll saw, use your bandsaw. If you don't have a bandsaw, use a coping saw. Use whatever you can. Jigsaw works as well, guys plenty of different ways to do this process. But let's start with getting that profile cut just outside the line. my two pieces held together with double-sided tape and I have my new template um, attached to the top of this with double-sided tape as well. Now I have a bit that's big enough that I can cut them both at the same time. If your bit is smaller then um, you may want to do them individually. But what I've got is a pattern bit here which has a bearing top and bottom. This one's three quarters diameter. And I'm just going to come in on this edge here and I'm going to route along out to the top and that will give me the profile on both pieces uh, being identical.
Well, we've got the side panels uh, routed and uh, it did a great job. They're identical. And now it's time to cut the top of, um, of our bread box. Now, if you're following the initial instructions, you're going to want a piece that's 21 and 7 sixteenths long by 8 and uh, a sixteenth wide. Um, for me, because I modified it, uh, I have to go a little wider. So um, I believe mine is actually going to be like eight and a half or something like that. But either way, that panel that you glued up for the top of the bread box, let's cut that to its final dimensions. Well, the top is cut to its final dimensions and I've given it a, a light sanding all over just to take away any little imperfections. Um, it looks nice. The lamination looks really nice. I mean, that looks like one solid piece of board, even though uh, it is laminated pieces. And you can uh, obtain the same results if you pay attention to the way the grain patterns are running when you're laminating these together. Um, the way that the side profiles mount to the top is with a sliding dovetail. So we're going to head over to the router table and set up a router bit to cut the dovetails into the base. We're going to cut the slots in order to accept the um, sliding dovetail from our side pieces. Well, I'll just run through what it is that I've set up here. I've got a half inch dovetail bit set in the router table and I've got it set to a height of three eighths of an inch. Now, I've set my fence here to one inch from the center of this router bit to the edge of the fence. So one inch in to the center of the bit. And I have my INCRA miter fence here. And what I've done is you want to make sure that your router table fence and your miter fence here are, are at 90 degrees to each other. So I've just gone along and you know run my square here to make sure that everything is set up correctly. We need to put a dovetail in here um, that will be seven inches long. So I have measured that mark on the board and I've placed a stop mark right here on my fence. So when the time comes, I will butt this up against the fence and I have a stop lock on this side of the miter fence to help me hold it. And I will run this through until I reach that stop mark. Then I will shut off the router. Once the router's come to a complete stop, I'll back this off, turn my board around. Now, of course, I can't run it through the same way because these are stopped sliding dovetails. I will actually have to reverse it and start from this side and go from left to right on the router table until I have reached another stop mark that I have placed on this end. And by doing that, I will get two stopped uh, dovetails that will be on the underside of the back of my uh, breadboard, or sorry, bread box. And after we're done that, we'll move on to the next step so let's, let's get these routed.
And there we have our two dovetail slots. Um, you can see how nice they are at the back um, and on this side here. Now we need to cut the tails that are going to go into these dovetail slots. And it's all just really a matter of simple math. The top of this slot right here from the tip to the tip, the corner to the corner, is a half an inch. We don't need to change the height of our bit. That's already set. But what we need to do is cut the material, set our fence so that it trims off the same angle as what we've got here, leaving only one half of an inch at the top. And in order to do that, I'm going to get some uh, material that's of the same thickness as what I'm using for the sides. And uh, that way we can use the test material to fine tune our uh, tails and then we don't mess up our final pieces. And there is our test piece um, out of the same size stock that we made the sides out of. And uh, it's strictly just to get the fit and it fits in there good. It's a good solid joint. We're gonna obviously glue this in, so there's plenty of room to get a little bit of glue in there, clamp it in. Bob will be your uncle. So I'm gonna route these tails onto our side profile pieces and do a test fit of the, uh, the sides to the top. Well, the bench is in quite a mess and of course the sun is shining through causing me some problems so hopefully you can see this. We'll just slide those dovetails in as far as they'll go remembering that they're a stopped sliding dovetail and once we get them in as far as they will travel you'll see that we've got an overhang at the back here. We need to measure that overhang and once we get that measurement, we're going to cut that amount off of the front of the dovetail so that it slides all the way in and ends up being flush with the back. Well, in order to cut that end off, all I did was uh, I just rough marked it and then I cut it off just roughly at the scroll saw, leaving one eighth of an inch extra and that eighth inch extra I'm just going to take a sharp chisel and I'm going to cut the profile here of this last little bit hopefully to match that of the router bit. Now it doesn't have to be perfect of course uh, you'd want it to be as perfect as you can but we're just going to chisel that out and then once we get it chiseled out we'll do a test fit and just see how we made out. Again, it doesn't have to be anything perfect. You're just trying to mimic that round profile of the router bit so that you can get it right into that uh, sliding dovetail that we cut earlier. Well, you can see that I've cut this back a little bit. And what I've done is, uh, you can see here, I've kind of rounded this off with a chisel. It's not perfect, it's not gorgeous, but what it does do is it allows this uh, sliding dovetail to go firmly into the joint and stop flush here, so that when the whole project gets put together. You've got that nice dovetail at the back and uh, it looks like you really know what you're doing. 
So there you go, that's the sliding dovetails done. And with that, once again, we're out of time this week. Um, I would have never imagined in a million years that this would have been a three-part series. In fact, when I thought I was going to make this build, uh, considering that I already had the how to make the tambour uh, with the router bits done, I figured this was just going to be a quick build, bang one off, and that would be it. Uh, how wrong was I? That's okay. I'm having a blast with this one. Uh, the sliding dovetails, the templates, the routing of the track. It's all a heck of a lot of fun. And uh, I'm glad that you guys are joining me along for the ride. So guys, I hope you're going to join me next week when I'll bring you part three of our bread box build and yet another woodworking video.